Now, it doesn't matter what kind of experiment you do, something that is an important skill that you must learn is the correct way to display your data. And this is where a results table is absolutely key. Now, perhaps we had an experiment where you maybe uh, altered the length uh, that you maybe rolled something down a slope. And what you then did is you recorded the time, t, uh, for an object to fall down that. Now, at the moment, just having l and t isn't quite all that you need. You also need to think about uh, not only the quantity, but also the units. And the best way to separate your quantity from your units is with a slash like this. Now, it might be that you measure the length in meters, and maybe you record the time in seconds. And what this shows me is that I have both the quantity and the unit. So here I have my quantities and my units. Now we can do that in other ways. We might say that we have time in seconds, um, or it might be that we say we have uh, time comma seconds. But by far the simplest, and I think the best way is to have one of these slashes between the two. And that's kind of the accepted format. Now, um, something else we might need is uh, maybe repeated values. So maybe then just rather than having uh, t in just one value, but we might have t1 and t2 also measured in seconds. We might then take maybe the average of these two numbers. So I'm gonna put a bar on top to show that's my mean value. And again, I also have my quantity and my unit. And perhaps we get a clue. Maybe we're told to see, um, or maybe investigate the fact that maybe L is proportional to T squared. Uh, again, this is something that you might be directed on, but this might come from maybe some kind of Suvat equation. We might know that S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. And provided the object maybe starts from rest, we might say then that S is gonna be proportional to T squared. So this is maybe a relationship based on some theory and we want to test it out. So there might be then another column that has your value of uh, T bar squared uh, and the units for this, because if that's in seconds, must be in seconds squared. So all I have now are my column headings. The next thing is uh, you need to make sure that you do actually have, and this is just really more my bugbear, is use your ruler. Okay, use your ruler to actually construct your table. There's nothing worse than seeing kind of sort of scrappy lines drawn. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna draw my uh, various parts of the table. So there we go, that is my table drawn uh, fairly quickly and fairly neatly. Now when it comes to doing the experiment, this is when you get a load of data and uh, perhaps we maybe uh, have our independent variable being the length and we might go from 0.1 of a meter up to 0.6. So what I have here are my six values, and it tends to be you need about six different values of your independent variable uh, in order to have enough data to plot your graph. Now, so far, this isn't good enough, okay? What we can do is if we're measuring something with a meter ruler, we can always measure to the nearest millimeter, and your table has to show that. So really, I'm not just measuring to the nearest uh, 0.1 of a meter, I'm measuring to the nearest millimeter, which is the 0 0.100 of a meter. So here we have our significant figures, which tells you about the resolution of that measuring instrument. And I'm gonna do the same for all of these. So here we go, this is maybe more like what the data should look like. And you can see that all of them have the same amount of significant figures as we go down that table. You then might do the experiment and you might get values of T. So I'm just gonna populate these. So here we have some data, and again, I've uh, put all of these to two decimal places, which is basically the resolution of that uh, stopwatch that we may be using to record time. I can then work out the mean value, which is simply this value added to that value divided by two. So in this case, this one's gonna be equal to 3.16. Uh, this one here is gonna be equal to 4.50. The mean value of these two values is 5.485. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round it up to keep it to the same amount of significant figures. So in this case, it's gonna be equal to 5.49. Okay, so even though the average is 5.485, I've kept all of my data in this table to the same amount of significant figures, which is based on this data here. As I go down, that's 6.33. This value is seven, uh, and this is 7.75. But again, we need to keep everything to the same amount of significant figures. So although this is exactly seven, I should write it as 7.00. What we could then do is we could then look at our calculated values based on this raw data. So again, this is where I use my calculator and I can then start to put my calculated values into the table. 
And what I've done with my data here is because this was given to three significant figures, I've kept my values here to three significant figures rather than increasing it to a fourth, which is why it's now just one decimal place. But basically that is what you need to do when you draw a table. You have your quantity and your unit, you have enough values which are recorded to an appropriate amount of significant figures based on what you're measuring, and also you have your repeated values, your mean values, and any calculated values as well. And if you can follow those basic uh, kind of rules, then there shouldn't be any problems when it comes to recording your data in the future.